Uh, this weekend has been kind of frantic and uh, we've done a lot of really good eating and uh, we have gotten to meet some really nice people and we have really been encouraged uh, by the conversations we've been able to have with the elders and with their wives and with uh, Ryan and Kristen we spent some time with them yesterday and to be perfectly candid with you I'm I'm just really encouraged by what I see as a follower of Jesus and in, in what I see in, in so many of you it's such a blessing uh, to see uh, how God is working in your midst and so uh, this is this is uh, really a, a special time for us and I, I consider it a privilege to be able to be with you this morning uh, this is kind of a weird day though it's it's weird for us and it's it's got to be kind of weird for you too you know I was thinking about this you know you have a strange preacher and I don't mean strange like strange strange but different strange but although the more you get to know me the other might apply anyway but but what's really kind of weird about this is you know there's either one of two ways of looking at today either this is going to be the first of many many sermons or this is going to be the last sermon and perhaps the last time you'll ever hear of me so you see what I mean it's it's a it's a little bit out there but Anyway, as, as Ryan mentioned in his prayer, uh, ever since the uh, elders extended it uh, to come and, and to be with you this morning, it, this has been something that I've been praying about this moment right now. What needs to be said? What do I need to say to you? What does God want me to talk with you about? And how can it be said in, in such a way that brings glory to Him? That's something that I've been really concentrating on. I want to, to try to encourage your walk with Christ today and also hopefully that you'll be able to hear God through some of the things that I'm saying. To that end, I would invite you, if you have your Bible, to turn with me to the book of Hebrews. And we're going to be focusing on Hebrews chapter 10 this morning, verses 19 to 25. Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. Now before I read this scripture to you, I want to talk with you just a little bit about it so that it will make a little bit more sense to us all. The book of Hebrews was written to followers of Jesus who were Jewish in their background. These were people who were Jews and who came to understand that Jesus is the promised Messiah. And so because of that, because of their acceptance of that, they decided to follow Him and to accept Him as Messiah. So this is a special group of people and uh, these are a, a people that uh, were having a bit of a difficult time understanding. They, they were able to accept the fact that Jesus was the Messiah, but there were still many things in their understanding of the Old Testament law and prophets that just didn't quite make sense to them, that they were having a difficult time connecting all of the dots. This book serves really to accomplish that purpose. And if you'll read chapters 1 through 9, what you'll discover is literally a line by line item of all of these distinctive things of, of how uh, their walk as Jews was uh, fulfilled by Jesus the Messiah. Talking about sacrifices, talking about people like Melchizedek, and just all of these things, issue after issue after issue, to help them better understand uh, what it means to follow Jesus and where it all fits together. Chapter 10 begins with kind of a grand summary of what's been said in chapters 1 through 9. And, and kind of this comparing and contrasting the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Which brings us to verses 19 to 25. Verse 18 says this, And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. This is talking about how Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice for sin, there is only need, uh, a need for one sacrifice for sin, and it is Jesus. And that's what we celebrate as followers of His. That's what we just celebrated a moment ago around His table. 
But join with me. Look at, at verses 19 to 25 with me. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, His body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Can we pray together? In fact, would you just grab the hand of the person that's next to you and, and let's just pray together as, as, his, as his body. Dear Lord, we're so grateful that we can gather in this moment, we know that you're with us. We want to hear your word. We want to understand your word. We want it to have its fullest effect on each of us so that we can be truly your body. Help us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were looking closely at that scripture, you will notice that there is a phrase that is repeated three times. The phrase is, let us. Let us. He's talking about, because of this great sacrifice of Christ, because of all of these things that have been done, these are the natural responses. These are the normal responses. These are what I would like to, to, for us to consider today as virtues that mark us as followers of Jesus. These are the normal things that followers of Jesus should have as our lifestyle, as the world sees us, and as we go out into it to make a difference in the name of Jesus. What are those virtues? Faith, hope, love. You've heard those before, haven't you? Yeah, Paul wrote about that. Faith, hope, and love. Now, it, it says it in a bit of a different way. You're going to see where I'm, I'm drawing that from in this text in just a moment. But may I suggest to you today that if there's one thing that God's Word, and, and particularly the, the message of the, the New Testament, is trying to get across to us as we try to follow Jesus, is that we are to live distinctly from the rest of the world. We're to be different. There is something about us that is attractive. There is something about us that is different. In fact, I've entitled this message, Distinct. Distinct. There's just something about true followers of Jesus that sticks out like a sore thumb, if you want to see it in that way. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, called it being salt and light. There are so many metaphors throughout the teaching of Jesus and in the writings of Paul that emphasize this. The idea that we're to be different. This is what normality looks like within the body of Christ. So let's look at those three together. First of all, in verse 22. Verse 22 talks about what I would describe as this, uh, this kind of faith. The virtue of faith. And let me suggest to you that it's saying that, that we should have, we should possess a confidence as we consider drawing near to the throne of God as we approach Him in worship, as we approach Him as His followers. We should have a sense of confidence. And the reason that we are confident is not because we are good or not because... Uh, we have some special power or because of any other reason other than the fact of Jesus. Jesus gives us confidence because we are in Him. I think Christ followers today face an ongoing struggle 
between humble confidence and prideful arrogance with respect to following Jesus. Because of Christ, we are invited, we are welcomed into fellowship with Him. But oftentimes there are a couple of what I would call abnormal reactions to this invitation. Some refuse the fellowship of drawing near to God confidently because of uh, perhaps a, an inability to deal with the sin that is in their life. Perhaps you, you have seen this, maybe you've dealt with it to a degree yourself. What I'm talking about is the idea that sometimes uh, people are, are so troubled by the sin in their life or troubled by the, the past of their life that it's prohibiting them from really drawing near confidently before God. Brothers and sisters, can I say to you very plainly that the blood of Jesus covers all sins. And it gives us the ability to approach that throne, just as the author of Hebrews is saying. This is something that we should be celebrating. But see, the other side of that coin is, sometimes as followers of Jesus, we can... We can we can get off just a little bit, right? We can get off base. We can overemphasize. We can get confused. And what happens times, at times is there's kind of a cockiness that, that might happen among us. You know, well, I'm, a, I'm a follower of Jesus. I, you know, kind of got the world by the tail. You know, and, and it comes across like that to folks. And it's, it's not the attractive thing that God has called us to do. And so, may I suggest to you what, what the author here of Hebrews is saying is that we need to have a balance. And that's why he emphasizes the two things. He talks about how that we've been washed with the pure water. And that we've had our hearts sprinkled clean. I believe this is talking about how that when we come to Christ, one of the experiences that we all experience is being baptized into Christ. And baptism is a wonderful thing. It is a point of reference that we can draw back on confidently and say, this is where I gave my life to Jesus. This is where all of this sin business was done away with. And now I can confidently come before His throne. As uh, we also know, one of the benefits of, of coming to Christ is that His Spirit comes to into us and gives us a new heart. It gives us the ability to live this distinctive lifestyle that I am talking about. The abnormal responses that I've mentioned have a tendency to slow our spiritual growth. But if we can get this right, if we can have the right perspective on how we can approach God confidently, we will see ourselves living distinct lives. This humble confidence Confident, but humble. Let's look at the second. It has to do with the idea of hope. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we have because of Christ. Verse 23. Hope. Hope is a wonderful thing, and we're reminded here that hope is based on a promise. It is the the subject then of what we say of our confession or our profession as this tells us expressing our belief that Jesus is the Christ that he is the Messiah that he is the promised one of God is talking about something you know hope has to do with the future doesn't it it has to do with what's coming and looking forward to what is coming an anticipation of the future and just as he resurrected from the dead, we're reminded that one day we too will resurrect from the dead. That, uh, as John says in 1 John, we don't know exactly what it's gonna, he's going to be or what, how we are going to be, but we will be like him, is the promise that we understand. Like the virtue of faith, hope can, um, can be misunderstood and misapplied. You know, I've been a preacher for a while. Um, and one of the things that uh, I've tried to emphasize in, in ministry are what I would consider very practical things. Things that uh, help the body of Christ to grow and, and to be encouraged and, and so on. One of the things 
that I chose not to emphasize because there seemed to be so much confusion about it, so many different opinions about it, had to do, and, and some of you, when I say what this is, you'll know, oh boy, yeah, tell me about it. It has to do with the future, talking about the future. What's going to happen in the end? I mean, you go talk to anybody and you're going to get a different perspective, right? Well, let me tell you, as a minister, one of the questions that you get asked all the time is, well, how's this thing going to end? You know, how, how's, you know, when's the Lord coming back? And, you know, just all of these kinds of things. And I suspect this morning that we have different, all of us are going to have a little bit different perspective on that. So as a practical matter, I just decided, you know, that's a little bit above my pay grade. I don't know how it's all going to happen. And so... I, I was perfectly fine, I've been perfectly fine to just go through my, minist my ministries, the churches that I've been serving in, with just kind of a, of a general, uh, you know, approach to that. You know, of course, believing that we will spend eternity with Him, all right? But just, just kind of leaving it there. And then something happened. About 18 months ago, my mother passed away. And that has really shaken me. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Because my mom uh, is about as strong a Christian as I've ever known. And uh, Camille and I got to be with her and watch her draw her last breath. And... And yet after she drew that last breath, and as I saw her there, and, you know, it's not like I'm a minister. It's not like I haven't seen people die before. And it's not like I haven't spent time with people grieving the loss of loved ones before. But somehow this was different. I thought, well, it's, you know, it's just your mom. You get over it. Well, it, it didn't really pass. And it really has bothered me. I don't know if, if you run into things like this that, have, that bother you and it just, won't, it just won't pass. Don't let that frighten you. In fact, what it's actually done for me is it's been, it's been a great thing. Because what it's done for me is it's forced me to look at the scripture more closely. It's forced me to dig deeper. It's forced me to, to think about things in a way that I had, again, I had chosen not to do. And it's what it's helped me to do is to discover that the hope that we have in God that is promised because of the resurrection of Jesus is infinitely greater than anything I had ever imagined before. And I felt great about that, but then I felt kind of bad about that because this is something that I haven't really been focusing on nearly as much as I probably should have as a minister of the gospel. God has some really amazing things in store for us. And I want to share with you today, brothers and sisters, that, that God, is not, God is not afraid to, to let us approach him to understand some of those things a little bit more clearly. Now, I'm not standing in front of you today to tell you I've got it all figured out. I do not. But I have a much clearer perspective of it today than I did have. And uh, it has brought a tremendous amount of peace to my life. And I believe that's part of why the author of Hebrews is writing this. Because if we're going to live distinct lives, we need to have confidence not only to be able to approach his throne, but we need to know that if we're going to walk out into the world and be expected to live faithfully for him, no matter what, that it's going to be worth it. And I want to stand here before you today and say, it's worth it. Whatever you're going through, it is worth it. Let's look at the last one. The last one. Let's consider how to spur one another towards love and good deeds. 
You know, I could probably stop right now and not even talk about this. I see, I see you all doing this in so many practical ways. I, Camille and I have been here, I don't know, I, we haven't even been here 48 hours. And I have seen so many demonstrations of, from within the congregation of practical love, I couldn't even list them all. You get this. So I can either say what I came to say or I can just quit now. Now I know that's, some of you are saying, well just quit now then, you know, we don't, no, no. <laughs> You don't understand preachers very well, then, do you? No, 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 no. <laughs> there is one thing I, I do need to, to remind you of. Because I suspect in Mississippi, you have a problem, just like we do in Kansas. In fact, it's in, it is in the American church in a major way. There exists the belief today in the American church that assembling ourselves together as we're doing right now is not important. It's not necessary as a follower of Jesus. It doesn't matter and, and as you talk with people and I'm sure you have as you've invited people to join you in, in settings like this you've probably heard people say things like well you don't have to be in a church building to worship God. Have you heard that? Really? Just me? Okay. Um, well, there's a lot of people who think that. And what that's reflective of is a, a mindset that doesn't understand how that followers of Jesus are to be distinct. Right now, what's happening right now in this moment is that God is through his spirit and through his word and through the fellowship of a body of believers he is energizing us and he is preparing us to go out and to live distinct lives this week that's what's happening right now now is it true that you could you could offer your praise to God any place absolutely in fact if you're not offering your praise to God every day you ought to start doing that but that's not really what we're talking about here. Let us spur one another on with love. How, that, how can we spur one another on towards love and good deeds? Did you hear Brother Ron a moment ago? What he was talking about, the, the little gifts that and maybe some big gifts. I don't know what y'all did for, for him, but Brother Dale was talking about it too. I'm telling you, you, you have no idea what a, a, a little gesture like that does to someone in that position. It, it is like a, a booster shot steroids, whatever you want to call it. It just fires you up and makes you want to just serve that much harder. That's what love does. That's what encouragement does. And I'm telling you, in the world today, it's something that's lacking. It's something that was present in the body of Christ and has been present and apparently still is present in Fulton, Mississippi, which is encouraging to hear. And I'm telling you, you already know this, but let me affirm it again. That as you love one another within the body of Christ, it will be distinctive, it will stand out, it will be attractive. You know, in the first three centuries after Jesus' death, the church grew in phenomenal ways. These strange people, these distinctive people, were known mainly by three characteristics. They shared everything in common. They had a tremendous love and connection with one another. There were, they were in, in a society that was uh, engrossed in all kinds of immorality. They were chaste people. 
And the pagans couldn't understand it and were curious. And those who were still following uh, as, as Jews were amazed by it as well. And they just were drawn to it. And the church just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. Faith, hope, love. These are how we are to be known. Now, I could say a lot more about that. Um, actually, I think a minister could spend the rest of his career talking about those three things. Which maybe now you can understand why I wanted to introduce the subject a little bit this morning. Yeah. I believe that God wants us to be a people who are different. He's called us to be salt and light. And to spend the days of life that he's given us encouraging one another to do that here and wherever it is that he calls us to go. Let me, as a, as a brother in Christ, let me just encourage you. It looks to me like you've got that last one going on really well. The other two, I, I'm not saying you don't have, but work on those two. Amen? And uh, let's, let's live distinct lives for Jesus. That's what he's called us to do. Pray with me, would you please? Father, help us as we labor here in your world as your ambassadors, as your representatives. You have washed us. You have purified us. You've challenged us. You've given us a vision and a hope. And you've given us a vocation and a method. As we strive to better understand that, I pray that, that we would demonstrate to the world around us how you are different and what it really means to be the human beings that you've created us to be. Father, we're so grateful for Jesus, and we celebrate him today now. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, please stand for our invitation.